all right hello everyone thank you so much for joining this meeting and a very very warm welcome to all of you it is absolutely wonderful to see you all here taking time out of your busy schedule and keeping the fire of learning always ignited in your hearts before we start the process i would just again like to welcome all of you and uh, to this meeting and i'd like to let you know that this is going to be an interactive session so i'd encourage all of you to put in your questions that you'd like to ask our guest today onto the chat box and we'll try to you know cover up all the questions within this meeting so uh, it is definitely my privilege to welcome all of you to our event today i'm your host amodri bhat and i can assure you that we will turn your evening from good to great and wonderful filled with so many stories and insightful discussions and a little secret but i can only give away the secret if you stay till the end so let's start this wonderful discussion with none other than our guest mr jatin khurana the ceo and co-founder of rever as for me it's hard for me to describe this man's potential in a few words but i will try my best to give you a crisp idea of what a wonderful guest we have today a 22 year old second time entrepreneur he graduated from nmims bombay with a bsc in finance in his current role jatin is the ceo of rever a marketplace startup for founders investors investment bankers and mentors at just the age of 21 years old jatin has exited successfully from his first fintech startup simple and is also an investor at master a new age startup that makes cutting edge web 3.0 technologies varying from ar vr to blockchain with his expertise and interests in fintech food tech and marketplace based startups he has a clear understanding of the technological world jatin combines that with a deep understanding of how to model businesses so they can be flexible and adaptable to future changes he brings a unique ability to predict the future of technology and its impact of business models in at least the coming 5 years this becomes an extremely useful element when designing a present day business model so without further ado i would like to invite jatin to take this discussion forward and talk us through the inspiring journey of rever all the way back from where it began jatin the stage is yours hi amudhi thanks for having me um hi everyone well um with respect to rever uh if i talk about i mean uh, after i sold my previous startup uh which was into fintech now it is called as fimple uh i had a and i actually don't know what i needed to do right so i gave a couple of months to myself thought uh, about ki kya karna hai kaise karna hai then the idea of rever struck to me that when we started uh as we when we started fimple uh we faced many challenges and many issues uh and those issues are something that you know many entrepreneurs of today they uh, face and that is idea to aage ab kya kare so the the so called thing of ab kya kare is the exact problem that i was set out on to solve uh and which is what rever is all about uh yes there are current existing solutions who have been doing very brilliantly uh some incubators uh accelerators and all of that but i only found one issue uh is that there's something called as apply now which acts like a wall between the entrepreneurs and the resources so if an entrepreneur is not a good storyteller or cannot fill the form in the right manner he would not get inside and that's a that's a big big issue uh i wanted to bring some element of democracy in it uh wanted to make it accessible to all someone sitting in a tier 2 or a tier 3 city as well uh that is when uh came up with the idea of rever so rever basically has five pillars to it uh for entrepreneurs number one is the of course it's the mentors number two is the knowledge number three are the fundraising aspects number four service providers and number five which are extremely important are the networks that you can get through rever uh how can you access rever our app is going to be live on 17th of april so that's like almost there um but the website is already live you can just scan the qr code uh right so this was the basic i would say motivation behind bringing the rever uh, initiative or starting the rever initiative all along 
all right um that's amazing to hear and uh, all i'd like to say is thank you jatin for sharing your story and i hope everyone was as amazed as i am the way you navigated your entrepreneurial journey the steps you had taken and all the decisions that you had to make as a founder were really inspiring the inside story and experiences you shared also about running a startup and ground work which every entrepreneur has to go through to build such a magnificent organization was profound today's discussion i believe would truly help and inspire new entrepreneurs and seasoned founders to strive hard and turn their visions into reality but i will not let you rest so easy it's time for the most exciting part the question and answer round i hope everyone will have a ton of questions that they want to ask to you so once again i would like to request all participants to drop your questions in the chat box and we will try to take as many questions as you can before the meeting is over so i think we're good to start the q and a and me being the host i would like to play my privileges and ask you the first question so uh, as we've heard the news of svb bank and the recent collapse of it uh, in today's world as you yourself are a founder of a startup how do you think this has impacted the indian startup ecosystem that's a very good good question and uh, it's a very recent one but before getting into the startup ecosystem you have to see how the world economics work covid was a black swan event even for the united states of america uh, they after the influenza they had never seen something like this uh, so what happened then the fed of course did not know what to do uh, and it was it was all out that the life it is what it matters it did nothing but started to print a lot of money uh, once you print a lot of money once you print a lot of dollars your money supply increases and all of that money uh, is actually waste right you don't know what to do the demands of the luxury goods go up uh, the you you just start investing into stock market you don't know where to spend it it's just it's just like tomorrow uh, your government is so rich that i credit 5 lakh rupees into your bank account and it's like you know it's just a gift and uh, americans went mad uh, they started investing into i mean they started investing into all the crazy stuff uh, so after this you know we of course have to see the repercussions and we are seeing so after covid was over and i mean still going on but so let's say the wave was over uh you see the inflation it raised really really raised up and it, it really rose to around 7.1% record which is a huge number for a developed economy i mean i i'm i'm not sure about the numbers of the current inflation numbers but it's pretty high right uh on the other hand if you look at india we have been i mean the world is applauding us the way we have tackled the entire covid scenario the way our leaders have you know come out with the relief packages we have not overspent we have not done anything and our markets have performed really well 2022 was a good year for the markets for indian market compared to the other markets uh, our inflation is in control um, i mean it's expect you know except for a couple of uh, parts it's all right uh, but yeah now coming to your question with respect to uh, the bank collapse see the bank collapsed because the inflation got so high there were no depositors right because bank couldn't give interest rates so in inflation so this is the cycle inflation gets high fed comes in increases the interest rate uh, of their repo rate the moment repo rate is incre increased bank uh, bank's liquidity gets crunched their bank cannot give out loans uh, at a high interest rate and uh, there are no deposits right so there there's no one to deposit their money to the banks so you have to understand what how a banking business works so people come and deposit their money at let's say 3% interest rate and bank lends the same money at let's say 6% interest rate and the 3% is the margin that the bank earns that's how but because of this black swan event uh, there was a very big mismatch in this and there was no margin left for the bank due to which the bank collapsed uh, now with respect to indian startups uh, as i've seen i have also seen the news we had some startups exposure some startups who had exposure to the svb and i think government is some somewhere working upon it uh, but i don't see any startup ecosystem is getting affected a lot uh, what i do see is the bank is the banking system getting affected as a whole i mean in europe in america as a whole it's going to get affected i mean you can see the case of credit suisse and now even deutsche 
uh, how the entire situation is piling up and it's going to burst. Uh, UBS came to the rescue of Credit Suisse, but if Deutsche goes down, then it's a big nightmare, big, big nightmare for Europe. Uh, however, similar to SVB, a recent report by the Wall Street Journal was that uh, there are many small banks, small finance banks in the US that are facing very similar situation to SVB. And uh, and you never know when, you know, the time runs out and it's a boost. So more than the startup ecosystem getting affected, I feel the entire economy as a whole of the banking industry in the US especially getting affected. Uh, Indian startup founders are still raising funds. They are still, I mean, our banks, HDFC, Kotak, uh, Access, they are extremely strong. I The management is very good. Uh, I mean, one of them, I'll tell you an interesting fact. So before this sort of banking crisis uh, or the SVB fall, SVB is the second biggest bank to fall in the US. Uh, can you guess what was the first one? Uh, I guess I'd love to hear it from you first. It was it was Lehman. It oh, was a 2008 crisis that Lehman fall, fell. So Lehman was the first uh, bank that fell in the US in June and you know all the 2008 crisis was there. The interesting part is the CFO of Lehman Brothers is the chief admin officer, or is the other way around, of Silicon Valley Bank. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's all the same story all over again. Um, these these guys are criminals. They they should be put behind bars. But what can you do? Uh, so yeah. So that, that's my view. But I can be wrong. Let's see. Of course, I believe that was really insightful. I mean, we, all I can say is we can keep our fingers crossed and see what happens next. Uh, moving on, I'd say that, you know, since we heard a little bit about your past experience with uh, startups. So now that Rever is probably your third startup, if I'm not wrong, then right now you have quite a lot of experience with the pros and cons of being a founder, of being a co-founder, of being a CEO. So could you maybe tell us a little bit about what you would say were the hardships that you faced uh, while, you know, the journey of getting a startup uh, onto its feet and what were probably the difficult parts of it that you had to go through? I mean, this will again will be a sales pitch forever, but okay, <laughs> I can <laughs> answer this question. Um, just to correct you, it's my second startup, not a third one. Oh, sorry. I'm an investor in the other two. So, yeah. Uh, well, the hardships that I, uh, while starting up for the first time, it was really tough. I mean, we used to go to every incubator. They used to come up with some sort of excuse. Because, see, we, we thought that incubators are the ones who take pre-revenue startups, right? Uh, but that was not the case. And I was very shocked seeing that. Uh, once you fill up their form, and their form is also so long. I mean, I can't even imagine. You fill up their form, uh, then you, sometimes you don't even get an answer. Uh, then sometimes they give an answer and they're like, you know, our cohort has ended, maybe for the next one, maybe for the next one. Uh, some of the reasons, some of the most stupidest reasons that I got was that you don't have traction right now. Uh, you don't have revenues. And I, my point was like, aren't you an incubator? You are the one who's supposed to guide me through or, you know, hold my hand throughout the journey. So there were many hardships. Uh, didn't, did I, I did not have any clue what technology because I come from a finance and marketing background. So I had no clue how technology worked. Now I'm a technology geek, um, an enthusiast. Uh, I have, have learned a lot from my from my co-founder. I mean, he has been after my life to learn everything. He sends me a lot of a lot of things and he's like, you know, just need to read this, read this, read this. So this has been up. Uh, now I think the hardship one was, of course, I pointed out knowledge, then did not have anyone to go to that's mentor. Uh, did not have the right networks. That's again the network part of it. Uh, did not have access to funds or don't know how to raise funds. They had no knowledge of funding. That's funds. And finally, cannot trust any service provider. And if you see, these are the five elements I'm solving at Revit. So that's also the sales pitch. So yeah. All right. Well, I guess then we're a bit lucky that we yeah. have you, of course, <laughs> as our mentor. Of course. All yeah. right. Then moving on. 
Um, so these two questions itself have given us personally so much insight into you know the finance world and the startup world. So now you obviously have much more experience to us compared to when you started. So if you today had maybe a chance to speak to your younger self, then what would you know maybe a piece of advice or you know a little mentoring sketch be that you would give to your younger self? There's only one thing that I'll tell to my younger self: start early. You start. You started late. Really, you started at twenty-one. Is that still? I I, I, I wasted twenty years of my life. Of course. <laughs> but speaking yeah. about mentors and models, you know, then uh, is there someone in your journey, maybe a model or a mentor that you looked out to? I mean, my co-founder is a great mentor to me. Uh, he okay. comes from a background of consulting and finance. He himself is an engineer, so he's been mentoring us, not only me the entire ever, uh, but uh, that one person I really look upon to look up to is uh, Steve Jobs, and I've mentioned it many times. Uh, I'm his fan. I am, to be very honest, I'm not a big fan of his personal life, uh, but a great fan of his marketing skills and the way he presents himself, the way he sells himself, uh, the way he talks, and you know he. The way he, you know, grabs the attention of the audience. That is something I really admire. Um, I've read a couple of books about him. Uh, I absolutely love the guy. I've seen all the interviews that he has given. Uh, I love that guy. I love the legacy that he has left behind. Apple. Uh, but yeah. So the, he he's not my role model, but someone I really look up to. Well, we also hope that you as well as Rebel would possibly take this company to a higher level. Just like Steve Jobs. So um, the next question for me would be that, you know, um, every entrepreneur, they have certain sets of qualities, some that are probably must require in order to build a successful company. So if you could maybe list out a few qualities that you think, that you think are, you know, a must have for every entrepreneur, then what would that be? Yeah, some of the qualities, uh, I mean, there are a lot, but I'll just, Point out only two. Uh, one is persistence. I mean, you have to be persistent. It's a it's a very rough job. I mean, I I sometimes talk to people who are like, you know, Jatin, you are doing entrepreneurship. It's so great. We are stuck in nine to five. I'm like, dude, if I I really wished that I loved being a nine to five guy because it's so convenient. It's so easy. Just go there, be there at nine to five, do some work, come back home and enjoy. Uh, whereas an entrepreneur has to, I mean, you have to wake up daily and you have to see, you have to think what needs to be done. And every day is so different and dynamic that you really don't know. And sometimes you only don't have the answers and your team is there standing in front of you and they're like, Chatham, what is to be done? And you have to make up a lot of stuff. I make up a lot of stuff. Right? So one is persistence. Uh, you will you will face many rejections, many no's. Uh, many people will not show to your webinar, even though you have amazing registrations just kidding um and you know so so all of these but you have you have to you have to sail through you have to be there you have to uh, focus on the main objective and keep going that's number one number two is patience uh patience is i mean it's even more important and these two things go hand in hand um you know patience at the end of the day is something that if you if you strive to build a big company i'm not talking about companies like zomato or by Jews who just you know or Bharat Pay the loss making companies. I come from a school of thought of zero da and zoho. Uh, I want I don't want to create big startups of big valuation. I would love to create a sustainable business that is growing year on year at a fifteen percent interest uh, at a fifteen percent rate, and that's good for me. Fifteen percent CAGR, that's very good for me. Uh, but uh, that's of course after a point of time after you know you have no you are not a startup after you know you have crossed 10 years of age but yeah so these two are the things that you have to be very focused you have to be very focused and the moment you inculcate these two things you automatically become focused there's nothing stopping you no fear there's no failure you never take anything as a failure you always take everything as a feedback and you know you just take it as a feedback and then you just improve on it so your entire perspective and the attitude changes Right. So I can already guess that all of our viewers are probably jotting down your notes by now. Um, the next question that I'd like to ask you is a little more inspiring. I'd like to maybe you know suck out a few ideas out of you. So 
what would your ideas be to get the first 100 customers that you would direct to probably all our entrepreneurs or the ones who wish to be entrepreneurs who are watching this Two show words. right now? Two words. First 100 customers, be Besharam. As an entrepreneur, you have to let go of your ego. True. I will take a dress and customer, but I will take a dress. It's like you have to let go of your ego. Uh, okay. Again, so my mentor and my, of course, co-founder told me a concept of something called as my people. I mean, you don't even realize how many my people, how many people are there in your you know circle. And you never, the moment you start uh, getting the concept of my people, uh, it, it'll, it'll start multiplying. So in your my people comes your, your best friend, your best friends, my people, uh, your general college friends, your school friends, your office colleagues, your family. So at least everyone in India, in a country like India, saw my people to support. Pehle, ke das customers aapke my people sa. No matter what business is it. And then, wo saw ke, khud ke saw saw my people. Hon. So, and you know, it's the ripple effect. It's that. The best business model, uh, I find, is of zero dance. Okay. And they have done, they have never spent a penny on marketing. Not even a penny. Whereas their uh, competitor upstocks spends a lot. I mean, I think it's its budget for last year's marketing was 300 to 400 crores. Wow. And Zero Da was, and it, it posted a loss, net loss. And Zero Da on the other hand posted a profit of, I don't know, a couple of thousand crores or something without spending a penny on marketing. And it's the referral based marketing that happens, the word of mouth. So getting your first 100 customers, Besharam Olo, Jitna Besharam Olo, Jao. Food ka business hai, pagal do. Food ki app hai, bhai, idhara. Khana ho yaan se order kar. Bhai, idhara. Dunia favor, tu mera bachman ka dost ka tuhi kar. Get Besharam as much as possible. And you will see the results. First 100 customers. People say it's very hard. I think what is harder is the 100 to 100,000 customers. That is when you have to put a lot of capital. Uh, I mean, that depends on the business. A lot of capital, a lot of strategies. But first 100 customers are actually very easy to get. And you know, just apply the my people concept and you'll get it. All right. So I guess it's time to start spamming our friends. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what, are, what are they meant for? <laughs> of course. They owe it to us, don't they? Yeah, of course. All right. Moving on. Uh, as you spoke a lot about, you know, being patient and uh, whipping out your contacts, all of that. So I believe that this entire process might get a bit tedious. It might take quite a toll on a person to, you know, stay persistent as you advise. So when you were in a situation where, you know, probably in the midst of your hardships, then what helped you get through the journey? What helped you to motivate yourselves and push yourself to remain persistent? It's very easy. It's very easy. It's actually, it's a very, it's a question that's very important, but the answer is extremely easy. And this is one exercise I do. Whenever things are not going your way, and there will be time, Right. Whenever things are not going your way, just sit down somewhere, close your eyes, take a leap 10 years forward, imagine the future that you have already built, see how things are happening. Automatically, you'll get the motivation to build it again. To, to come back and just, you know, start. Just close your eyes for two minutes. It's a two minutes exercise. See and go into nitty gritty, right? Ye, ye, ye post hai. These are my customers who are coming. And this is how it looks like. Just until all this, you see it very clearly. A founder needs to see it very clearly. I, I, I'm a big believer of manifestation. Until unless you see it very clearly, it won't happen. As simple as that. It won't happen. So you have to close your eyes, see it clearly, and you have to see it happen. And you know, then you will get the, all the energy in the world to do it, to make it happen. All right, so I can say that this is probably Jatin sir's open invitation to all our viewers to literally follow your dreams. Yeah, of course, I mean, you have to. I mean, no, no matter, it's not about being founder also, it's about any industry you're in. Just, just imagine yourself in the future, like, you know, 10 years down the line, where are you going to be? Like, just, just imagine and it will ultimately start working. Definitely. So, Jatin, speaking of, you know, a plan ahead of seeing your company five years or 10 years down the line, what plans do you have 
forever in the next five to ten years. I mean, I cannot uh, reveal everything because you know I, I may get copied. Just kidding. <laughs> you <laughs> I, can smell a few secrets, I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, nothing. Uh, we are planning to launch it in India on 17th of April. Uh, we are planning a global launch in a couple of months. So we'll be mostly going to the US, the UK, Australia to start with, especially Dubai as well, and Singapore. Um, other than that, if you talk about five years down the line, oh, dude, I'm gonna kill it. Uh, because see, entrepreneurship as an industry is like pharma and education. No matter what downturn of market is there, or is there an economic crisis, these these things don't get affected. Aisa to hai startups ani bandho jayenge. Startups hamesha hainge, ideas rose hainge. I mean, I'll give you a statistic. So roughly, on a daily basis, around 10,000 10, ideas come into being. Yeah. Out of which, 100 ideas are executed. Out of which, 10 ideas are become businesses of some sort. And one of them becomes a decent sized successful business. The entire startup ecosystem today is working on those one to hundred execu executed ideas. What I aim is to help the other 9,900 ideas get executed in such a way that not all of them are bad. I mean, they're not bad. Some of them can be a big crap, but everybody deserves a chance, a fair chance. They may lack like, some resources, some mentors, some fundraising, whatever. So I cannot solve things for them, but I can definitely support them. Uh, so in like next five years, I hope to support at least uh, a million startups. And that's uh, my personal goal. And I think, I think I'll be able to achieve it. Well, we hope it's the same for you. you. Um, so before we open the chat for the rest of our viewers, uh, I think I can sneak in one last question. And that would be that maybe you could talk to us a little bit about the myths associated with the industry of startups. I'm sure that every industry has a little bit of fake news, a little bit of myth that always finds its way through. So maybe one myth that you have heard of and if you would like to bust that myth for all our viewers today. Okay, the, the myth, uh, see, the one myth I would say is that India may serve IITNs or IIMs this is not true. I'll repeat it. This is not true. If you have the right idea, if you have the right team, right conviction, right, you know, I would say the determination, fundraising should never be the goal. Automatically, things start happening. Things will take place. So this myth that sort of IIT, yes, IITNs have so I'll tell you the concept why IITNs pick up money so easily. The concept is because IITNs, they have this alumni networks, which are already successful IITNs there, and why existing IITNs go uh, fund kar dete. But we are drivers, we are trying to resolve it entirely by having a community of our own. So wo jo alumni network, jo sirf IITNs ke liye tha na, wo alumni network sab ke liye leke aa rahe. So in a matter of a year, I mean, this problem, this myth, pura hi khatam ho jayega. Already khatam ho gaya because we have like not only there, but there are many such platforms that are coming up. And I, I really feel happy seeing that because demand is so much. There are so many startups coming in. So this is one of the myths. Uh, it's okay if you're not from a tier one college. It's absolutely all right if you don't have a tier one education or a degree. If you have the skill, if you have the determination, just up na Simple. All right. Well, it was wonderful hearing from you. And now I think our chat is open. So we have one question lined up. Sure. Uh, let me read it out for you. What are some of the biggest innovations in tech that you look forward to happening in the startup space? Well, one of the uh, really good one was the introduction of generative AI, right? Uh, GPT. I really loved it. And uh, I, I never thought that I'll be seeing it in this year. I mean, I, I still thought that this level of AI is still at least a couple of years away. Uh, but once it's out, we have adapted it at Rever. What we are doing is that we are integrating the entire chat GPT at Rever now. So in the app, so you'll soon see a chat GPT adapted version of Rever, wherein uh, the, you can talk to the bot just the way as a friend, 
and it can guide you uh, throughout the startup journey. But the other innovation that I'm really excited for also, all of these buzzwords, metaverse and all of that really don't excite me much because Facebook has been spending $10 billion uh, in making it, right? Uh, and I think that's per quarter or per semi, semi-annually, whatever. And still, you know, I think it's far, far away. The other technology that I'm really, uh, I'm really, really looking forward to is the technology of, uh, I would say, blockchain. Um, blockchain after the crypto crash, so people have started to, people have started to, you know, see that, uh, crypt, people have started to relate blockchain to crypto. It's not. It's very different. Blockchain is like internet. Uh, so internet you per Google hai. so Google is a byproduct of internet or these websites are byproducts of the internet it's not the similarly cryptocurrency is something that is built on blockchain mm. so I'm really looking forward to it uh, I can just go on and on about its uh, potential and everything but I think we are a bit out of time uh, so um, yeah. yeah we actually have a follow up question now that you have spoken of chat GPT the okay. question says that do you think chat gpt could affect unemployment in the future and affect people's lives in the negative way i mean time will tell you <laughs> i mean to be, to be very honest chat gpt so it's it's like humans right humans ka kaam hi hai bahut zyada overhype kar dena they overhype a lot of things bahut sari cheezon ko overhype kar dete right uh, but if you ask from my perspective, chat GPT can be a very good addition uh, to anyone. Anyone who won't have a skill of operating chat GPT or won't know how to use it in a better or a smart manner will definitely uh, lose to the one who, you know, who has. So I think it's going to be a compliment, but you never know. Uh, I, I mean, there are a couple of things that I would say that once robots and uh, Tesla has built Optimus, which has been deployed into its uh, factories now. Uh, and it started to build robots on the basis of ChatGPT, as Elon Musk is one of the founders of OpenAI. Uh, so I won't believe it until I see it. It's that sort of a thing. Uh, but as much as my research goes, I think it's a big compliment to humans. And uh, it won't take away jobs. But if you don't upskill yourself, then it's not about ChatGPT. Any smart person will be. All right. Well, I still think that there is quite a debate which is continued over the creativity in the industry due to chat GPT. And I think this debate will last for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a big debate going on. But okay. I love to watch the debate than to be a part of it. Of course. Yeah. Spectator in this case. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'd like to wrap this up. So our session has officially come to an end, ladies and gentlemen, and it gives me great, great pleasure to draw this event to a close. We've had an incredible time here today, and I'm sure you'd all agree upon uh, Mr. Jatin giving us so much to ponder upon. So I'd like uh, Jatin, sir, if you could probably give two lines of a closing statement for everyone before we wrap up the event. I mean, there's this very good line of my one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's that guys, it's okay. Startup, I mean, startup comes it comes with a lot of pressure, right? Uh, so I, I, and I always say this, and I will say again, say this again. Startup hota rega, business hota rega, everything will happen. Your health is really important. Your mental health is really important. Uh, you should have a work-life balance. As a startup founder, I'm telling you, it's extremely important to give time to your friends and family. Don't get mad behind your startup. Uh, I mean, my role model, not uh, all the person I look up, up to, Steve Jobs, even during his last days, said this. Uh, don't get mad, right? He did not live his life properly. That's why I don't admire his personal life. It's important to have a personal life, a family life, friends. It's very important. And I mean, kya pata? Maso gilo muskarao, kya pata karo nao? Of course. Well, thank you so much, Jatin. Uh, and just before I close the event, I'd personally like to thank you again 
you know, for being the expert of this evening, for taking time out of your obviously extremely busy schedule and sharing your insights and knowledge with us today. And of course, your answers were truly inspiring. And I'm sure that everyone here in the audience can relate to your journey and gain from uh, quite a lot from your experiences. Secondly, again, uh, I'd like to thank all of you over here for being here today. Your presence and participations have made this event truly special and memorable. Without you, obviously, this event would not have been possible. Lastly, I'd like to express my gratitude to Reva for putting, for putting together this platform where all of us like-minded individuals can find a story to relate to and feel a part of something that is in something alike in this big world. But just now, I received a message from my team to fulfill my promise to all eager learners who stayed with us until the end. So yes, of course, how could I forget the little secret and a gift exclusively for you? So keep your eyes on alert and listen closely to what I'm about to reveal. You all have been selected and granted early access to be a part of Jatin's journey and shake hands with the Reva community to bring you all the support in the building of your startup journey. Reva is an ecosystem designed for startup founders at every stage. An idea to IPO acting as a go-to buddy for the startup founders throughout their journey. Reva is launching soon and we would love to have people like you who share the same vision as us. Reva is not just a community for knowledge sharing. It comprises of real people striving to make real connections with all of its members and to stand by them and extend our support so you don't have to stress on difficulties of building your dream. Instead, you can focus your energy on your vision. So don't worry, guys. I know it is easy to get lost in the way you feel and like you were wandering alone in this journey to make it in the world of startups which is why I'm glad to inform you that Team Reva is always there to engage and help you through our wonderful events, just like the one that we have today and so many other fun activities we have planned out so that no one feels astray. We have planned to conduct two special activities per week, wherein Tuesdays are going to be reserved for bigger events, just like today, and Fridays for a little smaller events, but still very fruitful. I bet you really want to know what's lying in store for you. But alas, we can't disclose everything as of now, now can we? So enjoy our community and stay updated with all the latest events and other necessary updates. It is now time to say Alvida. So I hope you leave here today feeling inspired and motivated to take action based on what you have learned. We look forward to seeing you again at future events. And before I close this event, I would also like to personally remind all of you that there will be a Google form uh, because your feedback is extremely important to us. So there is the Google feedback form added to the chat of this meeting and it will be circulated on the WhatsApp group as well. Please remember to let us know what you think and what you have felt and understood in this event so that we can do better to help you out in the future events. So thank you, Jatin. Until next time, keep dreaming okay. big and making a positive impact on the world. Good evening, everyone, and bye-bye.